Hi booktube, this is Juan from Just One Reader. I am here with another Friday Reads video. It is only the fifth day of June, and uh, June June feels like it's gonna be great. I, I think if it keeps on going the way that it has been going, I think it's gonna be a really great reading month for me. So uh, this is another Friday Reads video in which I will talk about the books that I have finished reading this week, what I am currently reading and what I will probably start reading uh, this weekend and will carry on with uh, the following week. So this week um, I finished two books, so this, this, was, this is already great. Um, I'm thinking of a song from the musical Carousel by Rodgers and Hammerstein. It's, the, it's a song about June. Um, it has the word June on the title and I've been thinking about this song and I can't remember, I think it's June, June is busting out all over, June is busting out all over, da 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 well, so June is going great. And I am already singing in a video. It's very early, whatever. So the first book that I finished reading this week was P.G. Woodhouse's novel, Heavy Weather. Heavy Weather is a novel set in the world of Blanding's Castle. P.G. Woodhouse, as I understand it, has written several um, stories set in different universes. For example, he has the very uh, famous, very popular Jeeves and Worcester universe, and then he also has this very popular, uh, very beloved universe of Blanding's Castle. Um, I have read uh, all of the stories in this collection, which is A Bounty of Blanding's, so it's a collection that uh, binds up some stories of this universe of Blanding's Castle. And I have to say, reading this book was such a treat. Um, all of the stories in this collection, including the novel Heavy Weather. Blanding's Castle really is such a great literary universe. I, I, I love going into it. I love following these characters. They are eccentric, obnoxious, warm, uh, lovable. Some of them you love to hate them. Um, they are laugh out loud funny, they are hysterical, but I, w what I treasure the most about all of this is P.G. Woodhouse himself as, a, as an author, as a voice, as a narrator. He really has a warm, loving, affectionate, and yet incredibly mocking and, and ridiculous and nonsensical kind of style. He doesn't take himself seriously as, as a narrator or as a, as a voice. Um, so this particular novel, Heavy Weather, is the last one in this bind-up that I have, and it's pretty much the same. Um, it's the usual Blanding's Castle shenanigans. It is um, sometimes very confusing and in terms of plot, it can be so convoluted that um, you, you just lose track of what is going on and who... Every character has a motive and has an agenda and has a secret agenda. So it's very... And there's a lot of characters and a lot of little plot lines and subplots. So it's sometimes a little hard to follow what is going on. Um, in a way, I would compare this book to um, Le Nozze di Figaro. The opera by Mozart, you know, it, it's sort of hilariously confusing, but it doesn't really matter. The story itself doesn't matter. What really matters is the, the great effervescent quippy writing um, and the loving humor. Um, it also feels, it feels like a combination of Le Nozze di Figaro and uh, an episode of Scooby-Doo, you know? Uh, do you remember how in Scooby-Doo there used to be a lot of these situations with uh, a hallway with many doors on either side of the hallway and characters would be walking from one doorway to the other and coming out of another doorway and they would be chasing themselves 
uh, in confusion for a long period of time. That's how this felt like, but in a delicious way. So I gave Heavy Weather four stars. Just love P.G. Woodhouse and I really want to continue now. Maybe with Blending's Castle Universe or maybe with uh, Jeeves and Wooster. So the, uh, the other book that I finished this week was The Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Biddle. This is um, the, the, the anecdotes and the thoughts and goings on of Sean Biddle. He is a, um, an English, um, well, I don't know if he's English. Well, he, he lives and works in the bookshop in Wigtown, which is in Scotland. So I know the, the, uh, the bookshop is Scottish, but I don't know if he's Scottish as well. But anyway, it's a very English, Scottish, you know, British sort of um, book. And it's just a year in his life and it involves the goings on at the bookshop so there's a lot of uh, very interesting musings on book selling and the business. Um, but there's also things about his personal life, his love life, his social life, his uh, reading life. There's many things that, um, that you learn and that you uh, feel like you participate in because it's, it's like going into his mind. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. It's not perfect just because it's a diary, it's a journal, and as a reading experience, I feel like it's, it's, in, it's essential, it's inherent to the nature of a diary that it will sometimes feel um, a little bit repetitive or maybe uneventful. You know, there are days where nothing really happens, but that's fine. Um, so I really, really loved this book, that being said, um, for many different reasons. This was a body read with Leo from A Little Book Life, and we have had a lot of interesting conversations about this. Um, this book is very funny. It's dry, almost mean-spirited kind of humor. It's not, I wouldn't say it's mean. It's sarcastic. It's ironic. It's biting. It's snarky. I love it. I absolutely love it because even though you can see that he, the author, is putting, is is conveying this sense of, of, of like dry humor, you can really feel that there is a love and an affection underneath. So I loved this book and as I said, this was a body read with Leo and we were talking a lot about this. There's many things to discuss when reading this book together with someone else or by yourself, there is a very interesting line of thought about Amazon and, you know, Kindles and the, the new technology um, that sometimes is replacing physical reading, physical book selling, um, and the physical object of a book. Um, so that, that was very interesting to explore. Um, considering that six years have passed since this book was written, and so we can we can think about what the writer was thinking about six years ago, uh, considering our current reality. So yeah, I would recommend this book if you enjoy books about books and about weird people who love books. It's it's a book about book customers as well, um, books uh, bookshop customers. I mean, in a way. This book makes perfect sense to read along, alongside uh, Jen Campbell's Weird Things Customers Say in Bookstores. People can be so obnoxious and so rude. You know, something that I was thinking while reading this book constantly was, I would never bargain. I would never hassle. I would never... I would never behave like the people in this book sometimes behave. Like they, 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 they want to lower the prices of books that are already pretty reduced in price. I would never do that because I know that for me, books are a treasure and they are something of value. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this book was great. I gave it four stars. There's a lot to think about in here. Um, and... I love books about books. They are a drug. They are an addiction. 
So those are the books that I finished. Um, now I'm going to quickly talk about the book that I am currently reading, which is The Overstory by Richard Powers. This is a body read or um, uh, it's part of a read along that I am participating in. It is also commanded by Leo from A Little Book Life and we are reading this. We are reading it slowly, taking our time with it because it is a longer book. So I have read a hundred pages of it and I am enjoying it. It's basically so far a collection of stories um, that will eventually, I believe, intertwine. But so far, it feels like a di disjointed collection of stories so far. And some stories are better than others, but so far I am enjoying it. Um, so I will be reading the overstory for um, the remainder of the month, I believe. And I also want to start reading a novel on my own. And that is going to be The Fermata by Nicholson Baker. This is a book that I haven't seen in here uh, on booktube a lot or at all, really. I have heard of some people talking very highly of Nicholson Baker. Um, someone told me in, in one of the comments in another video that he has a book called The Mezzanine, which is postmodern and really interesting, but I haven't really heard anyone talk about this one. So that will be interesting. And anyway, those are my Friday reads for this Friday. I am Just One Reader. Thanks for watching. And I look forward to your comments in the comment section down below so we can have a conversation about this.